Welcome to the DIY blog. My name is Anthony Dawes and today's topic is the importance of properly working smoke alarms. First, I'd like to take a quick second, give a shout out to my Aunt Sally who I met at the American Red Cross today to give blood. On this blog, we're going to put a link to the American Red Cross YouTube channel for anybody that's interested. So, let's talk about some smoke alarms. According to the United States Fire Administration, there's an average of over 400,000 residential fires every year. That's almost a half a million fires in the United States each year. These fires result in approximately 3,600 fatalities and 18,600 injuries every year. Now to me, the fact that stood out the most and was most surprising was 40% of all those injured or killed are four years old or younger. That's almost 9,000 kids every year. And according to the National Fire Protection Agency, statistically two-thirds of all the deaths in residential fires resulted because there was not working smoke alarms in the home. To break down that number further, 40% did not have smoke alarms in the home, while 23% of all the injuries and all the deaths occurred when smoke alarms were installed but failed to operate. The bottom line is working smoke alarms save lives. So it's really important to verify that the smoke alarms in your home will perform appropriately if necessary. And here's how you do it. Number one, you need to know the smoke alarms in your home and how they work. Number two, you need to know how to evaluate the number and placement of smoke alarms to verify they're adequate for your living space. And number three, you need to know and follow the correct maintenance schedule for the fire alarms you do have. Now point number one is knowing how your smoke alarm system works. The standard smoke alarm operates by a battery located within the smoke alarm itself. These smoke alarms can be mounted throughout the home as devices that act independently of all the other smokes in the home. But the best system is one that uses electrical cables to connect each smoke alarm to all of the other smoke alarms in the home and to the electrical service of the home also. This is considered an interconnected or hardwired system. So an interconnected system is better because all of the smoke alarms in the system receive their power from the electrical service of your home and every alarm in the system is connected not only to the electrical power but is also connected to the other smoke alarms in the system. This is done so that if a single alarm in the system detects smoke, not only that smoke alarm but all of the other smoke alarms in the house will alarm as well. In addition to the smoke alarm receiving their power from the electrical service of your home, the smoke alarms in the interconnected system may also have a battery backup. This is so that the smoke alarm will still function during a power outage. And again, the only alternative to a hardwired or interconnected system is placing individual battery operated smoke alarms throughout your home. Now smoke alarms receive their power internally, most likely by a 10 year non-replaceable power source or a replaceable 9 volt battery. This is the case whether the battery is the main source of energy or the battery backup. Now that you know how the smoke alarms get their power, you may ask, are the smoke alarms of my system in the proper place for adequate protection? Well, there are multiple building codes, and then there's the fire alarm code, and then your local municipality may have additional requirements. But remember, all codes are just the minimum standard. They're the bare minimum. So here's a list that would satisfy all the minimum national requirements for the placement of smoke alarms. These are points I have compiled by combining the minimum standards of multiple codes. Number one, there should be one smoke alarm in every bedroom. That's one smoke alarm, at least one inside every bedroom. And number two, one smoke alarm outside each sleeping area. So for example, if a home had three bedrooms, each bedroom next to each other and on the same level, 
then you would only need one smoke alarm total that would be the smoke alarm for the outside source of fire protection for each bedroom. Number three, top and bottom of the stairs. Number four, at least one on every level of the home. And number five, the highest point of the home. My guidelines for placement as it pertains to location of the wall is I prefer ceiling mounted uh, smoke alarms. And basically you would have it one foot from the wall on the ceiling or if it's mounted on the wall you would have them one foot from the ceiling on the wall. I do this because as smoke travels upward it curves away from the wall in away from the corner and onto the ceiling. Now if you have an existing house you're not required to have or install interconnected systems but new construction is required to have an interconnected or hardwired fire alarm system installed. If you're doing remodeling in your home, I have seen municipalities enforce interconnected smoke alarm systems as soon as you go beyond basic cosmetic construction. So it's a really good idea to ask your municipality before you start construction if they're going to make you do that. Now let's talk about maintenance and maintenance schedules for smoke alarms and batteries. Statistics show that smoke alarm failures usually result from missing, disconnected, or dead batteries. One reason may be that smoke alarms have a built-in function to create a tone or chirping sound before the battery dies. Sometime this, sometimes this chirping is interpreted as a nuisance alarm. But in reality, this annoying chirping sound is likely to be caused by overdue maintenance and needs a battery replacement. If a chirping sound is heard from an individual smoke alarm, the battery should be replaced immediately. The battery should never be disconnected from the alarm for any length of time greater than the time it takes to replace the battery. If, the, if replacing the battery does not fix the situation, replace the smoke alarm with a smoke alarm of the same model number. Then test the system to make sure the devices are interconnected properly. You test them to verify that each one is going to work together and that they all go off when one goes off. As far as the frequency of the maintenance schedule, smoke alarms should be tested at least once every month to ensure that both the batteries and the units themselves are still working. Replaceable batteries should be replaced in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions or a minimum once every year. If any malfunctions are found, the alarm should be immediately replaced along with the battery. Now here's a quick recap and some additional facts. Smoke alarms should be installed in every sleeping room, outside each sleeping area, and on every level of your home for a minimum of code. For the best protection, get an interconnected smoke alarm system so when one sounds, they all sound. Install a new battery in every smoke alarm at least once a year if the battery is replaceable. Immediately install a new battery if an alarm chirps, warning the battery is low. Replace all smoke alarms when they are at least 10 years old, or before they're 10 years old. Test your smoke alarms at least once a month. And here's the last fact. Most homes do not yet have the protection outlined in the 2000 edition of the NFPA 27. So please take this information and evaluate your home to make sure the protection is adequate. As always, if you're unsure, contact a professional or professional resource for help. And I know this was a little bit longer blog, we don't like to go this long, uh, but I really do appreciate your time. Uh, my name's Anthony Dawes, hope this helped, and be safe. Thank <laughs> you.